Hi, I'm Jacqueline Ray, out here today on the Warnix Ranch. We're here at a special part of his property, here to talk about some of the cattle behind us. Why don't you tell us a little bit about these cattle and a little bit about the Country Natural Beef's attributes. Yeah, these are some uh, cows and calves. We're a cow-calf family operation. Uh, we own the cattle from birth to the dinner plate, so to speak. Uh, it's a crossbred cow herd. The calves are weaned at seven, eight months of age, and uh, we winter them on grass in the winter time and hay, some protein supplement, and we carry them on through that next summer on grass, and then we uh, put them in a feedlot for oh about 90, 100 days, and finally when they uh, go to slaughter at about 17, 18 months old. Uh, and hopefully uh, gets on somebody's dinner plate. You know, it's been 27 years now, and we've picked up uh, different attributes. You know, hormone, antibiotic-free. Uh, we have uh, we have some guidelines as far as how long these cattle can actually be in a corral situation, so they're not confined very long. Uh, we have some graze well principles. We take a lot of pride in how we manage our grass and how we take care of our riparian areas. There's a lot of different things that we do nowadays that, uh, that helps oh. grow grass, grow quality cattle. Ever since I was a little kid working out on the land and, and uh, caring for animals, he um, got to be kind of a passion, I guess. When you get out on the land and you're looking at it every day and, and uh, figuring out how to make things better for the animals, uh, it gets to be a kind of a challenge to see how much, uh, how much grass you can grow. Well, most of this is blue bunch wheatgrass, and we like to get this grazed off in the winter time or a dormant season, maybe middle of the summer, if we had cattle here in the middle of the summer. We want to get it either trampled off by cattle or grazed off, the majority of it, so it'll come back nice and green and grow to its full height. It's got uh, lots of nutrition and energy in it. When we first got this place, this was really undergrazed, this yeah. ranch had been. And so you would see these plants here were old and woofy, and the centers were dying out. This is, see, this one is coming back. So what we did is we grazed with hoof action to break the plant back into your earth, you know, and that's good for your ground. So we just fed hay on all these areas. You just want to mulch yeah. it. Yeah. See, I mean, there's a lot of that stuff that gets a little bit in depth or scientific that, uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, I, yeah, we, we had to learn about it and, yeah. and stuff, you know, a lot of hardcore ranchers never used to be t that much in depth. And little holes aerate the ground, the squirrel mice holes and stuff. Is it squirrel holes? No, that's probably a rattlesnake hole. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> you're kidding. Yeah, we, we do, do have rattlesnakes. Have rattlesnakes yeah. Right, really? They go after your um, cattle? No. Rattlesnakes? No. no. Yeah, do they, they don't bother. No, they don't bother cattle ever. So, as far as other wildlife out here on your ranch, there's not just cattle. There's coyotes. Um, I also know there's wolves. Can you tell us a little <laughs> bit about how the other wildlife affects your ranch and affects your cattle? Well, they all, I think, have a place. You know, there's a coyote we were just looking at out here, and he's out there catching mice and running around doing his, his thing. We don't, we don't dislike coyotes. Uh, we've had some cougars. We've seen some cougars out here. Uh, we have deer and elk and some birds and chucker and quail. There's all different kinds of, of wildlife, and and that's what's so fun about being out here. It's we think they all have a place. I don't get excited if we lose an animal once in a while, but there is enough wildlife out here that, as far as the the predators, seem to focus more on the wildlife than the cattle. So Country Natural Beef, Randy, doesn't just doesn't just start with you. You also have four generations here involved. I started out with my granddad, and uh, <clears throat> my folks are still alive and involved in the ranch. And now we have uh, two daughters and a son. And uh, my oldest daughter is married, so we have a son-in-law, and they work with us on the ranch. And uh, hopefully we can keep the, the ranch interesting and motivate people to be able to be on this ranch for years to come. So Cassie and Clint, and this is their baby Colby, do you guys think you'll spend the rest of your life out here on the Warnex Ranch and continue on in this business? That's our game plan. 
that's part of why we try to come back and learn as much as we can and give our son the opportunity to grow up with the memories we had and the experiences and learn just about the animals and the land and respect and everything that we have an opportunity to be a part of that most people don't. Being part of it, you know, it, it's a good heritage to learn to take care of it and pass that on to future generations. So the bottom line is this is all about food. Do you guys eat the beef on a regular basis? Is this a staple in your diet? Every day. Twice a day or three times a day. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Great. So next is to see how does this food look and how does food taste. So let's go take a look.